All right, in that elliptical plate exercise, we are going to get introduced to the ellipse. So let's start a new file, set up the ASI 1020, click on a sketch there, and let's click start a new sketch on the front plane. Ellipse command is in the upper left middle row of the of the icons and if you click next to it you have options here to draw ellipse partial ellipse or elliptical arc as well as parabolic and hyperbolic conic section we will click on the ellipse now as i clicked on the activated the ellipse command you can see that little ellipse is next to my cursor i will go and i will anchor ellipse with a coincidence to the coordinate origin. I will put the major axis, arbitrary length, in a x axis direction, horizontal, and I will put vertical ellipse in a vertical direction. Click escape to exit command. I'm going to immediately place the center lines from one end to another. And as you can see, it assumes horizontal dimension and vertical center line. And I'm going to dimension those to a 5 inches for the major axis and to the four inches for the minor axis, and that fully define my ellipse. For this particular model, this is all what I have to do to create my primary feature. So I'm going to close the sketch and extrude the feature for a 0.5 inch. Nice. Now I'm going to start working on that inner cut. Inner cut, that square cut with the fillets, I'm going to make as a sketch. So I will place a sketch. And I'm going to click under rectangle. However, this time I'm not going to use the corner rectangle. I will use another command, which is when I click on the left, on the right arrow on the rectangle command, there is a command. There are two commands. One is called the center rectangle. And then there is a three point center rectangle. And there are three point corner rectangle and three point center rectangle. In this particular case, we will use a three-point center rectangle because it will be tilted. So I will reduce the amount of operations. There. So I will click on the three-point center rectangle. And I'm going to anchor its center here. And I'm going to put it under some angle and just click for the another point to define the angle. And then third point to get it up. Now, press escape. I'm going to put the dimension that it is a, I'm just going to dimension one side of it. Just going to dimension one side of it. And the one side that I'm going to dimension, I'm going to say that this is the one, and it will be aligned dimension, not vertical or horizontal, but aligned. So. And I will say that this size is a 1 plus 3, or 1 plus 1 inch plus 3 divided by 8. I don't need to calculate in heads. So 1 and 3, 8. What is the 1.375 inches? Click OK. Now, because it is a square, what it means that all other lines need to be on the same dimensions. So instead of dimensioning other line or all of them, all what I have to do, I click on that line that I just dimensioned, press and hold shift down, click on three other lines, and under relationships there is an equal option with the equal sign. So if I click equal, look what will happen. All of them are going to have the equal distance. Click OK. Click OK. Now, we know that this rectangle based on a drawing is arranged under 45 degree because why it's, its corners 
are coincidental with axis, with the vertical and horizontal axis. So to do this, all what we need to do, we will click on one of the center line diagonal and make it, let's say that we make this one vertical. Doesn't matter which one. And that fully constrains the sketch. I will close it and I will close the sketch. And now I'm going to do the extrude cut. Features, extrude cut, and that will be a cut through all. So we've seen the equal relationship, which help us, and we also seen how can we use all of the geometric, like coincy, all of the geometric ratios to keep the minimum number of dimensions. So instead of placing a dimension line with 45 degrees number, I just align the center lines. Now, I'm in a part mode, and anytime it is possible, I like to do the fillets in a part mode because they are much more robust. Fillet command in a part mode is this one here in the center, upper center of the screen. So I click on a fillet and I, all what I have to do is just type radius and radius of that fillet is a one half, so 0.5. And now items to fillet will be the four vertical edges. One, two, three, and four and we click OK and here is our fillet. Why I did that? Because now instead of messing up with a sketch which will which will be really difficult in many cases, all what if I want to let's say change it to a one quarter, all what I have to do is click on that fillet in the parametric tree and type it let's say 0.25 and look what will happen. Here is now one quarter fillet. So the model is very robust. I will take it back to 0.5. All right. So I am done with this cut. Now what else I have to do here? I have to place the two holes. And to place the two holes, I will use the hole wizard. <laughs> And the hole sizes in these cases are three quarter inches. Let's choose the three quarter. And I will place a position. Press escape. I will click on the point. Cape shift, click on the origin, keep those two horizontal. Likewise, I will press OK. Now I will click on the other point, press down shift and press the origin, keep those two horizontal. And now I'm going to specify the distances. And the distances is going to be what one and the three quarters. So 1.75. So I will click on a smart dimension. We'll click this to this. This is a 1.75. And I will click for this two distance to be the 1.75. And that fully defined my whole wizard sketch. Close the whole wizard, close the part. And here is my flange. And if I check the tool, evaluate mass properties it should be 1.88 pounds going to save this one whereas elliptical flange and to make a drawing make drawing from part i go with the portrait Bring in the front view. Vertical flange. And I will bring in the front view. And I'm going to put maybe this also isometric and the front view. I'm going to change the scale to a one to one. And the 
side view, I will use the custom scale of the one over two. Because that just I mean from the isometric view. And now I can import the model dimension syntaxes. So to import the model dimensions, so I will click on annotations, model items. I will click on my front view and I will click on entire model. Going to choose all the dimensions and I'm going to choose all the axes as well as the and select all. and click OK. And here are all of my dimensions. And now what I can also do, I can place the center mark for the ellipse itself. But I can place the center line from here. Let's actually see how can we do this. We can do that through the do this through the sketch. I click on the sketch and if I click on the center line, we can place from a one quadrant to another or we can actually extend it a little bit. So center line like hover above the quadrant and extend it just a little bit. And then another one we can place on the and we have all of the dimensions and now we need to have also the whole callouts and to insert annotation we can always insert annotation manually let's see the model I uh, pardon we can always insert the whole callout if I click on a whole callout and I press on the whole look what it will say 2 times 575 through all and we should also put that this is a squarical dimension. So to put the, to specify that this is a spherical, squarical, that this is the square dimension, we can put also 1.375 inches square here under dimension text. And that will be the SQ. Let's see if they don't have it as a sign. So I'm just going to type in here SQ, S dot Q capital. And that will take care of the dimension. Okay, so here is your fully dimensioned piece. And if you want this to be displayed as proper 1.375, we can increase the precision to a three points and it will display as a 1.375 square. And this completes our exercise of creating this elliptical piece. You should populate by yourself your table with informations.